Hey guys, it's Techran here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to go live with OBS Studio to YouTube, Twitch, Kick, whatever platform you want to. I'm gonna show you how to set up here today. If you guys did not know, we did a video like this in 2023, but there's a lot of things that have changed for 2024. So I thought it was time to make an updated video on how to go live with OBS Studio. So if you do find this video helpful, make sure to smash the like button. And for right now though, let's get into it. So first thing you need to do is download OBS Studio. I will have a link to it down below for you to actually download for yourself. And of course, we're gonna download it for Windows here. So we're just click on windows it's actually going to download and all we have to do to actually get a download is actually go into our file explorer and in file explorer we want to go into downloads and then you want to say obs 30 install and you would just open this on up and once you install so we get on to our next step now that you installed obs studio you might have the little thing pop up that says auto config wizard if this does pop up just cancel it so you're gonna have your scenes in sources just imagine your scenes as a place where you lay out different layouts of your actual sources but what we want to focus on for the timing is just our actual sources so if you want to add your webcam and gameplay and you're on a single pc setup let me show you how to do that here so what we're gonna do is right click on our actual sources we're gonna add our webcam first by going into add going into video capture device which might be like your webcam and stuff like that or if you have a capture card set up which same process you just add your video capture device you can see i have my side camera here that's my keyboard cam that i've usually set up on my streaming pc but for the time being we're using this as an example on my actual main pc setup and all you have to do is just check this you can leave everything the same and just say okay and bang you have your face cam set up which is pretty nice now if we want to actually move this around however we want all we have to do is grab a corner or grab somewhere and just drag it around we're going to set it to the top left for the time being here now sometimes when you add a capture card or a webcam you might actually have a little audio track that comes with it if you do see this right here you want to disable this because we're going to add a mic for ourselves so we're just going to mute this then I actually want to click on the three dots and we're just going to say hi and that way you can clear up your audio tracks a little bit and make it much more cleaner for yourself now if you want to actually add your desktop or your gameplay for a single pc setup what you want to do is right click in sources go under add and go to the display capture and there it is display capture and this will capture your main monitor whatever you game on so you can see right here i have my 32 inch monitor which is actually the monitor you see here and now important thing to keep in mind everything you have in your scenes is going to be considered a burger so the top of your button is going to be your webcam the bottom of your button is going to be your gameplay so you want to drag the source which is actually our gameplay drag it down to the bottom of our button so that way we actually have now our gameplay at the top and then actual display capture on the bottom and that way we can mess around with this and add anything in between maybe alerts stuff like that and so that's how you set that up that's just an important thing to keep in mind but now that we have our webcam and gameplay all set up that is looking pretty good now if you're on a dual pc setup you might need to set up another capture card that will capture your gameplay and all you want to do to actually capture your other pc is right click again add and then go to video capture device like we did for the webcam but this time you might have a capture card for like a elgato hd60s uh hd60s like x or something like that there's a lot of elgato capture cards and you would just select whatever capture card now i have this elgato game capture there's nothing connected for the time being but for example here let's just say this is my other pc i was actually going to click on this capture the input and i just put it of course above uh, my display capture so you can see with that We'd be good to go but that's just for example now you might be wondering how do i add my mic into my setup what you want to do is go into your settings and when you're in your settings you want to go into audio now you want to go to mic and auxiliary audio and you want to see this one's the first one we want to change this to whatever device is so i have a headset right here i'm using this as my mic for example and we're going to select that and with that we can actually add our headset which is pretty nice now the thing i would keep in mind is add a noise gate on top of it now what's this going to do if it doesn't cause any peaking or audio leaking through because like my ac is in the background i have a noise gate on top of it so that's why you can't hear the ac going off in the background because it's pretty loud so what i recommend you do is click on three dots for your mic and aux and go under filters and when you're in filters i would recommend adding one by right clicking and add a noise gate and you should just leave this as so when you add this and with that will actually make it so there's no peaking in your actual mic so now that we have our mic ad you should be able to see it right here and with the noise gate if i stop talking you should see no audio leaking through there's no audio leaking through that's good but if we were to disable it for example here and we were actually not talking you'll see some audio leak through from my ac or from anything in the background really and that's why we had the noise gate that right there was actually not what we want so we want to make sure to remove that by adding a noise gate so 10 out of 10 would recommend now that we have our mic and our scenes all set up you might be wondering how can i add alerts to my stream so when i get a new follower and stuff so what i recommend you do is go to bot tricks live which of course we'll have a link to that down below what i want you to do is sign into your twitch or whatever platform you're using you can sign into youtube if you're streaming to youtube 
And then when you're actually in here, you of course get access to a few different things. What we want to do is actually add our alerts. So what we're going to do is go in here. You can see our Twitch is now linked up and we go into widgets within widgets. You can see if you want to add a chat thing, you can do so. But the big thing is we want to go into is the actual alerts. Now, when you alert, you can customize how your alerts look however you want. But if you want to add it into OBS, what you want to do is copy this link here, go into OBS. We want to right click in our actual sources and add a browser source, which you can see right here, browser source. We're going to say, OK, and I recommend you set this to 600 by 600. And what you do is control A on your keyboard and you just delete that control V. And then there you go. You can now add your alerts into your actual stream, which is pretty nice. Now, of course, I would recommend placing this on the top of your burger. So that way it pops on up. So now if we were to test it, we should see our follower alert go off. So you see right here, our follower alert is working and I heard it on my computer. So that's a pretty good sign. So now that we have our alerts, gameplay and camera set up, what we need to do is the most important step is set up our settings before going live. So what we're gonna do is go into settings and OBS. And what we wanna do is go into output. So we wanna change this output mode to advanced. So that's the first thing I want you to do. Now that you've done that, what you need to do is change your video encoder. So you can see this is the CPU encoder, which is X264. But we wanna change that to our GPU because your GPU is gonna be better encoding than your CPU and put a lot less stress on your actual PC. So you should see NVENC on your actual PC. If you don't see any of NVENC, you have uh, AV1 or the AV1 encoder or Radeon GPU, you might have one depending on what GPU you have. So for example here, we're gonna use uh, NVENC because this is actually what we wanna use for our GPU and we're good to go there. Now, what you want to do for your coding settings is leave this on CBR, and we want to actually change our actual bitrate depending on what our internet speed is. So what we want to do is open up a new tab and look up speed tests on Google, and of course you should see internet speed test. And what we're going to do is run this. And what we want to look for is see our upload speed is higher than 12 megabits for 1080p, and if we don't have 12 megabits for our upload speed, it's like only 6 megabits, I want you to do 720p and I'll show you the best things possible for both one, depending on what your upload speed is. So you can see right here, I have 28 megabits upload speed, so we can do well over 1080p, but we're just gonna do 1080p for the time being. So what we're gonna do is go back into OBS. We're gonna change this, if you have 12 megabits, to 6,000. And now that we have our bitrate 6,000, you can leave the key bill, key for name interval the same. You can actually leave the preset the same. Uh, tuning high can be fine and also the multi-pass you can just leave pretty much everything the same the only thing i would recommend turning on if you're playing like an fps shooter like uh, call of duty apex legends or those kind of fast-paced games i would turn on look ahead so if you want to just enable this you can go for it but if you are not playing an fps shooter it doesn't really matter too much now the big thing you got to keep in mind is going to our video settings this is where we get the next important step so depending on what your resolution of your monitor is, mine's a 1080p, you wanna make sure you have your base canvas to whatever your monitor is. So mine's 1080p, for example, here, but you have a 4K monitor, you make sure this is 4K. And what we wanna focus on is actually the output scaling. So I know for a fact that I'm actually gonna stream in 1080, so we wanna make sure to set this to 1080p. And there we go, we're good to go because we have 6,000 megabits. And of course, you don't need to mess with the downscale filter. I would recommend changing the, the actual FPS from 30 to actually 60. And with that, we have the best settings possible for streaming on Twitch with over 12,000 megabits for 1080p. Now, if you don't have 12,000 megabits and you have actually lower than that, like 6,000 or below, I would recommend you change this output setting to actually 720p, which is uh, 1,280 by 720, of course. We wanna change it to that. And then what we wanna change is this downscale filter. We wanna actually crank that up to 32 samples or 36 samples. I don't know where I got 32 from. But with that, that's the first thing you need to do to make sure that you have the best stream settings possible for a lower bandwidth. The next thing you need to do is go back into your output settings. And what you want to do is change the spit rate from 6,000 to actually 4,500 because 720p doesn't require a whole lot of bit rate. So 5 and 4,000 is enough, but you know, just give it a little 500 just because why not? You can do 6,000 if you want to also, but if you don't have 12,000, I wouldn't really recommend it. Now we're on to the final step before you can go live to your live viewers. So what we wanna do is actually set up our stream key and URL. So what we're gonna do is go to stream. We're gonna actually change this from service to custom, which you're gonna see here, you should just see custom, click that. And what we need to do is get our server URL and also stream key. So let's show you guys how to get your stream key first. So what you're gonna do is go on Twitch, click on your profile icon and go under actually your creator dashboard. Now that you're in creator dashboard, what you wanna do is go under settings. And when you're in settings, you wanna see stream and what we want to do is copy our primary stream key by just clicking the button here. Now go back to OBS. And what we want to do is paste our stream key on in here. 
Now, to get your server URL, I want you to go to this page right here. Or we'll have it linked down below, of course. And what you're going to do is find whatever server you're closest to and actually do add it to your actual OBS. So, for example, here I'm in the US, I'm in Virginia. So, I'm close to Ashburn, for example, here. I'm not in Ashburn. So, we're going to copy this actual IP uh, or URL. I don't know why I said IP. And what we do is take this to OBS. And we want to put it under server and just control v and paste it on in here with that though we can now go live on twitch now if you want to go live on youtube same rule apply this time you want to go into youtube home page and go into your upload area and go to go live now once you're in go live you might have to set this on up for yourself for your stream beforehand which i recommend you do and once you're in here what you want to do is copy your stream key and the same rule apply you want to paste that stream key in your settings under stream and then where it says stream gate you can just control v paste that on in there and then you want to take your url which is the stream url and same rule apply paste that on in there and now you know how to go live on youtube as well now if you want to go live on kick same rule apply what you want to do is go into your settings on kick and when you're in settings you're going to have your stream area stream key and when we're in here what we're going to do is take this actual url copy that go into of course their servers paste that on in there and then what we're going to do with the stream key same rule apply copy that and paste that on in there for your stream key now you know how to go live on every single platform with the best possible setting if you guys did find this video here today helpful make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed so you don't miss some future tech content because i'm about to make a video later here on how to go live with streamlabs obs in 2024 with the best possible settings and all that other jazz like this video here so if you do use streamlabs obs instead of you know obs studio then you know what to do get subscribed so you don't miss out on that video and i'll see you guys on our one tech grant out